Hey folks, uh, my name's Dave Baird. I'm 55, and I first accepted the Lord when I was 12 years old, and I loved Him, and I did what I could to serve Him until I hit about the age of 18, and I started seeing what the world had to offer, and I ran. Ran through the world for a long, long time and met someone at work who invited me to church and I started going with them and they, 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 they led me to the Lord and I, I started serving God but there was still that pull of the world. And I started slipping back into the world. And I was still going, going to church, going, doing what Christians are supposed to do, you know, in the eyes of the church. But I was still slipping off and not, nobody knew what I was doing on the side. I was out doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And it came to a point one night where I was out and I was out doing things and I come home went and jumped in the shower and it was like there was a spotlight shining in my face and blinding white light and I don't know where it come from well I didn't then but I know now where that bright white light came from because a figure appeared way off in the distance. And I mean way off in the distance. And that figure put his hands out. And I heard a voice said, David, it's time that you come to me. And that was the turning point. That's, I was maybe... 25, 26 years old when that happened. And that turned me. I stopped doing the worldly things and I started doing everything I could to serve the Lord. It's part of the reason why I'm here now. Maybe someone will see and hear this, that they'll know that the Lord is there but I, I served him for, I've served him since then for many years. And trials of life, he's always been there. And the, there, there was a situation, I was still, it was before I was married, I was still living at home. And I grew up with a dad that he was very nasty to my mother. He was nasty to me. And he cussed my mother out many times. And I reached a point where I heard him cussing her out, telling her how stupid she was. And I went upstairs, pulled out a gun, and sat on the side of my bed. I did a load and lock, and I was had it planned out. I was gonna kill my dad for being so vicious and mean. And then I was gonna kill myself because I was not going to go to jail for killing someone that I, at the time, I didn't feel deserved to live. And God spoke to me that day audible voice as you can hear me now speaking God said stop he's not worth going to hell over he's not worth dying for God saved my soul he saved my life that day and I have told this to different people 
over the years. And I, I actually just started telling people a couple years ago. My wife didn't even know about this till a couple years ago. And I've been married for 24 years. Dave, was this before you accepted the Lord? No, this was after I accepted the Lord. God loved me enough to stop me. To stop me from ending my life. And I thank him for that. I praise him for saving me. He has saved me so many times. I've been a truck driver, or I was a truck driver. I can't do it anymore. But so many close calls, so many near accidents. And that, that brings up another situation where I was driving a dump truck, a triaxle dump truck, and I pulled into the asphalt plant. I was early. I pulled into the plant, and you do what you do. You pull out a pillow, and you take a nap until it's your time to get loaded. I had a dream that I was in a crash, that I was driving up the road, and somebody pulled, cut me off to exit the highway. And I rock, the truck rocked back and forth several times. And in the dream, I went over, and my arm was ripped off. In that dream, I heard a voice asking me, if I let this happen to you, not if I do this to you, if I let this happen to you, will you still serve me? And I said yes. And as soon as I said yes, I woke up. And my arm was throbbing and hurting. And there was no reason for it. <laughs> I went back to sleep. I had another dream that I was standing in up in the front pew of the church where I not, or sitting there where I normally sit but I'm sitting I'm standing in the back seeing the whole church and seeing me and my family sitting up in the front pew and they called for the musicians to come up to start playing I didn't get up and go and I sat there I, I, it's like I stood there watching me not move because I played the bass guitar in that church and I'm thinking why am I not moving the music started and we believe in praising and worshiping God and raising our hands in honor of him and when the music started everybody's hands went up my hands went up only I had a bandaged stump on my left arm. And again, the voice asked me, if I let this happen to you, will you still serve me? Yes, Lord. And I woke up. I got called up to go get loaded with the asphalt. And I went on down the road. And I was... Heading up the road, the exact same spot that was in the dream. The exact same car that was in the dream cut me off. And I started swerving to keep from smashing and killing that, the people in that car. And this truck started rocking. And just like in the dream, the truck went over. And the window of my truck, I was a foot and a half, two feet off of the pavement. That's how far over I went. 72,000 pounds rolling at about 60 miles an hour. The voice again asked me very clearly, if I let this happen to you, will you still serve me? Yes, Lord. I took my hands off the wheel and off the gear shift. 
I pulled my feet back off the pedals, and the truck stood up. 72,000 pounds at 60 miles an hour, and the truck stood up from a foot and a half off of the pavement. Physically impossible. Completely impossible for this to happen physically. Only could God do something like that. I still have this hand. I thank God for the use of this hand every day. And that was at least 10 years ago, 12 years ago, that that happened. God hears us. He knows us. If you serve him, if you seek him, he hears you. He will also test you. That was a test. Will you still serve him? Will you still serve me if I let this happen to you? Yes. I love my Lord that much. This physical arm, this physical body isn't us. We are spiritual beings in physical bodies. This body can go, go, go damaged. It doesn't matter. It matters what's in your heart and what's in your mind. Who are you? Do you serve God? There's a difference between knowing who God is and knowing God. If you know God, he will know you. I love him dearly. Dave, that was an amazing story. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about what your life was like before you met Jesus? And, uh, you know, kind of how that all went down uh, when you finally met him. I was a very miserable, nasty person. I was turning into my dad. I didn't have anything nice to say to anybody. I, I was vicious and cruel. You know, who, who do you follow? You know, Satan will put, put that into you to be that way. You know, I, I didn't like anybody. I didn't like myself. I didn't want to be around anyone. I'd have been happy with a house, a little tiny one-room house in the middle of a thousand acres as long as I didn't have to see or hear anybody. I hated people. I didn't want to be around them. I was around them because I had to go to work. You know, you, if, you, if you don't work, you don't eat. You have to go out and work. I wanted a car. I had to go to work. I had to be around people. It's one of the reasons why I started driving truck. So I didn't have to stand beside somebody or, you know, I'm not an office person. I, I, I don't do computers and that stuff. I didn't want to stand beside somebody and listen to their misery all day. Meanwhile, I'm in misery all day. That's who I was before I started serving God. And I met him. I got to know him. I fell in love with my Lord. And I have peace in my soul. I have peace in my mind that, you know, I see the way the world's going. I don't like it, but I know that it's another day closer to being with the Lord. It's another day closer to heaven. And I'm here to tell you that there's, that's the only way that I, I can see, and that's the only way that there is to have peace in, your, in, in you, is with the Lord. Well, Dave, uh, you said you were a miserable guy, you hated people. Uh, could you point to 
me the exact, well, maybe not the exact time, but could you point to me the circumstances surrounding that, that, that made you, well, not made you, but actually uh, caused you to want the Lord in your life? The whole time I was out running the world, doing worldly things, there was always that in the back of my head that if I died in that sin, I would not make it to heaven, not to stay, because everybody always, everybody will go to heaven. It's just where will you stand? Will, will, will you be at his right side or will you go to the other side? But That, that day, that night, where he stood there, and I firmly believe that that was God standing way off in a distance. It's time you come to me. It is time. I, was, I reached that point where God was giving me a last chance, and it took him standing like a half a mile away from me. I mean, the figure was only like that big, way super far off in the distance, but I could see his hands stretched out. It's time you come to me. I knew I reached an end. I knew that this is a last call, a last chance to come to the Lord. You know, before that, there were times where I pulled guns on people because of doing something where you just walk away. That's the kind of anger I used to have in me, and it's not there anymore. I'm free. I am free. You know, there's a song, I'm free, or my chains are gone. First time I heard that song, I burst into tears. My chains are gone. I am free. So you would not recommend that people wait until the Lord comes to them like he did you. Would it, wouldn't it be wise, maybe, <laughs> to, to ask somebody... Uh, to, to recommend possibly, well, not possibly, but to recommend that people, you know, hear this message, and if it touches them, you know, ask the Lord to come into their life even now. You would recommend yes. that, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay, you. It was wasted time. All that time in between where I thought I knew God, and I was still living in sin. That was wasted time. You know, so many times you hear, if you could go back and talk to a younger you, if you could go back and talk to a 16-year-old you, what would you say? Go back to the Lord. Don't seek the world. Go back to the world, or go back to the Lord. Seek him, and he will be there for you. And like I said, he will let you go through trials. His word tells us that. But if you don't go through trials in your life, how do you get stronger? I think of a weightlifter. A weightlifter lifts weights and, you know, in the process of lifting the weights, muscles get ripped. And the muscles get bigger because they've been ripped and heal back together it's scar tissue but it keeps getting bigger and bigger the more you do it well the more you serve God the stronger you get he will let you go through trials to strengthen you and when you come out the other side you will have such peace in your heart that you made it with his strength with his help 
and I can't remember the scripture, but I am only strong because it's his strength. It's not my strength. If I've tried handling things on my own, and it doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work. You have to keep him first.